Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. I hope today is an amazing day for you and you woke up with much gratitude. Today's session is going to be a little bit uh, different. Why? Because, as you know, the work that I do as a professional and uh, as an expert, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and I work with managing stress, pain, and helping people go from pain to gain. And what I call pain is feeling powerless feeling insecure, feeling anxious, and with negative thoughts to feeling absolutely great and wonderful. And the A is feeling absolutely acceptance and acknowledged to independent, feeling very much secure within yourself and having this beautiful nourishing and natural way of being. Because most clients who come to me, they want peace, inner peace, and that is what we work with. So today's session is going to be one thing that I have seen a lot with my clients is feeling this panic and anxiety and feeling as if they can't handle it and they are out of control. So what happens? What is the difference between um, between a heart attack and anxiety? And I really wanted to find out so I can give you exactly just a little bit of an understanding. And if you have had panic and anxiety, you probably know how it feels. It is the most uncomfortable feeling that there is. Yeah, I've had it. I remember when it started, um, I was uh, in my condo, I was by myself, and I felt it happening. And at that very moment, it is the most uncomfortable thing because most of my clients that come, even I, at that moment, it's like, what is happening? I've never felt this. And it's been said that it happens. Well allow me to say panic and anxiety, anxiety in itself. If you happen to be an anxious person and constantly going, going, going and a high energy level, then you probably will understand it better because uh, a panic attack is a sudden episode of intense fear or anxiety. Uh, associated with a physical symptom that happens and it lasts from it can last from a few minutes to maybe an hour or so and it is scary it's feeling uh, uncomfortable uh, out of control like it's beyond you so what exactly is panic and anxiety the panic anxiety and panic attack here is the symptoms The symptoms of that are chest pain, uh, being suddenly deadly fearful as if you are out of control, feeling a sense of impending doom. Uh, It's like suddenly everything is dark, suddenly everything is not yours. Shortness of breath can be a part of that. Uh, You can start trembling, this heart starts palpitating and you feel um, a shaking coming apart and you, you might even feel a sense of heat you know women when we go through menopause and we feel this sense of heat uh, pouring down our body most people don't understand it but a panic and anxiety a panic can also have the same sensation you might even feel uh, nausea uh, cold trembling um a feeling that it's it's never happened before now that's the difference 
um, a different feeling than uh, having a heart attack. And what exactly is heart attack? Uh, the way it is prescribed is heart attack symptom symptoms are chest pain, and it's usually uh, left side, which is the receiving side uh, towards your heart. You might have heart uh, palpitation, shortness of breath. Your jaw, jaw starts having extreme pain. And then right behind your neck, your arm may feel pain. You might have the nausea starting and extreme sweating. And it's a, it's an impending heart uh, difference. So a lot of my clients come and said, I felt as I was having a heart attack and I went to ER. Allow me to say, anxiety related conditions are the most common psychological afflictions of mankind. And I know it is horrible and is horrible to feel this sensation of panic and anxiety coming upon you because how every minute becomes like an hour. It's like nothing else matters. You don't focus on anything else. And if you've ever felt it, I hope you haven't. But one of the things that I've noticed is there's more people coming to my office with panic and anxiety than everything because the racing thoughts uh, are as if it will never go away and it may fade and then it comes back again. And often my clients, you, we have absolutely no clue how to resolve it, what to do and how to take care of it. Uh, so that is why so many of us talk about it as if it happens, as if fear, being afraid of something and then feeling this panic come over you, it's from the outside. So maybe you've heard this, but you cannot solve the problem when you are in and creating it, especially if your inner mind is using the anxiety as a way of protecting you from something. Believe it or not, your body is doing this for you. It is creating from the inside. It can be an alarm factor for you to take care of yourself. And I've shared this so many times. If you are not tending to your body, if you are not tending to yourself, then your body will shut you down so you do pay attention to you. I know. Let me say that again. If you do not take time to tend to yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, then your body may shut you down in order for you to start paying attention to yourself. And it can be emotionally, physically, mentally, it doesn't matter. It will break it down for you to pay attention. So especially if your inner mind is using the anxiety as a way of protecting you from something. Does that make sense? If it does, I want you to realize that your panic and anxiety, it is yours. It's not from the outside. So how do I help my clients? Let me give you just a short example of one client who has come here with extreme panic and anxiety um, that could not function and said, I don't know what you do I was referred to you. I don't care what you do. If you tap, if you touch, if you uh, make me just shut down, if you put me under, do anything possible because this is the most excruciating thing. I cannot drive. I am having extreme. I can't sleep because I'm afraid. So first session, I calm him down. 
we do the hypnosis for him to relax truly profoundly relaxation the first session being because I usually ask on the scale of one to ten how bad do you believe you are and he said I feel like I am 50 five times more than 10 so 50 is impossible 10 is impossible because if if you were at a 10 you would not be here you would be in the hospital so if you got here if you were uh, uh, able to drive and get to my office then you are not a 10 if you were a nine you would be having extreme symptoms so would it be okay for us to say you're about eight or eight and a half he agrees to that once there is an agreement that it is not a 10 to have a heart attack then that means he has hope so once the hope is built and he can breathe and he sits in my recliner and then we begin understanding how does the body react to thoughts because it is your thoughts that truly create the imagery and the body starts responding in order for something become reality it is a beautiful and I can say beautiful and yet it's a vicious cycle it happens when something happens and the body has to react to it and then the feeling starts thinking I am out of control I am having an anxiety and then the negative thoughts of I can't control this what if what if what if and then we go into the spiral of the negativity the fear factor once someone hits the fear factor and thinks they are out of control the cycle goes into the body reacting and trembling everything else so number one just like any first responder you are safe you can breathe and ground yourself somewhere and that's what I did with my client as he sat in the recliner is placing my hand on his hand and saying you are safe you are safe right here you are safe in your body your body physically is there to protect you you are safe you can breathe and then showing him how to do proper casual soft controlled breath work and once he realizes he can breathe and do four counts four three two one hold four three two one exhale four three two one three times four twelve it's a 12 count step first hyperventilating and then slowing it down 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 fully completely down all the way down all the way out all the way hold all the way close your eyes and relax your body you are in control you are safe you breathe in breathe out so what I do from being at this level guide my client and give him become the authority of his mind of his body and of his feelings thoughts ideas images concepts and as they drift from hyper I can't to wow I can is the first development and you can do the same thing any and all times you feel that you are out of control gently place your hands 
upon your ears. And as you place your hands on your temples, very gently, you know, little kids do this when we go to the ocean and we find sand, we play with the sand. The sound of sands, sands through the hourglass, even the imagery of an hourglass. When you turn this hourglass and you see the hourglass, the sand going through, and if you pay attention, it doesn't just gush down, it comes very gently. This entire time thing comes all the way to this one little tube that has to go through down, right? And one sand, few sands, they come through this thing until they find the opening and they come down to the bigger opening. So it's each and every breath that comes from above, comes all the way in from your nostrils all the way into the lungs and all as the lung expands and brings that oxygen vitality into the heart the heart takes that oxygen pumps it throughout your body all the way to the tip of each and every one of your toes sending oxygen from your bloodstreams into every essence every cell or every molecule every part of your body and as you do that if you are totally in sync with yourself even the sound you can do this bring your fingers close to your ears and very gently very gently and you hear the sound and slow it down it's like the sands or the sound of the ocean, a wind, heartbeat. And when you slow it down easily, most psychosomatic conditions are intimately connected to anxiety and stress. So, once you feel that sense of relaxation and knowing that you are safe in your body and you can shift your thoughts from I can't to I can and find a sense of safety within yourself, then you can easily and gently place one hand on your heart, one hand on your stomach, grounding your lifeline, your core, which is your stomach, and just like the same way as we pat on our chest for a little baby and we go hmm, begin humming. That hum creating a vibration that your entire body feels it. And believe it or not, because your subconscious knows every sound, every word, every thought, every feeling, every sensation will remind yourself, your body, your inner being of when you were a little child and when you were hurt, this feeling of it's okay, it's all good, you are safe, you are safe. And that's one of the things that first responders always do. I am here, help is on its way, you are safe, you'll be fine, I'm here to take care of you. It gives a perspective of, okay, help is here, I am safe. And then we can just let go and be. The moment you can let go and trust and go from fear factor to flow. You shift from I can't to I can. From fear, I can't, I don't know what's gonna happen, I'm out of control to I can, I can breathe, I am safe, I am in total control, I am present, 
okay? And that sensation gives you a sense of comfort. Now, most anxiety symptoms fall into three general uh, categories. One, reporting that chronic feeling of fear, right? Like dis disorder, okay? The second one is manifesting episodes of panic between the attacks and relative anxiety and the panic disorder. And the third one is a mixed symptoms because body is reacting, your thoughts are going. So what is it that we have to do to reduce it? What I did is eliminate the fear factor and then try to not try is create the safety and bring the state of mind of, yes, I can, for the anxiety to go away. So understanding that was created by you, for you. Okay, now, the second session was where the therapy started. Amazing. After the first session, my client goes home, having the tools, the techniques, having a beautiful, profound, hypnotic sensation of knowing how to relax and with the suggestions to the subconscious that I am safe and I can handle this. Other tools and techniques specifically for that client because each client is different. Not every client has the same um, keyword for them to use, right? And yours can be the same thing. Good evening, my miracle friend. Hello, Moshe. Hi, Sedat John. So what happens uh, after they home, they also get an audio recording that they can listen to each and every night for them to have not only my voice, but to have a way of understanding how, thing, how they can go into hypnosis with the help of my audio recording specifically for them, which it can be relax and unwind or stress no more. If someone is in pain, pain no more. Okay, so I have 12 audio recordings on my website. You can check it out, download whichever you want, and with a nominal fee, you will realize how profoundly you can shift from thinking I can't to I can. Now, second session, we start doing the therapy. This is one of the amazing things. As we get into when did the anxiety start? How did the anxiety start? Recognizing that the work that I do is part therapy and then taking them into a deeper state of hypnosis to work with the subconscious mind, right? Where the subconscious has absolutely no feelings and it's just like a robot. It will do what it's asked. It will do upon the command that it's accepted consciously and subconsciously where the feeling and the emotion to an experience is connected. And what we do is through hypnotherapy, tap into the subconscious, bring that file, experience, shift the emotion connected to that experience and edit it. And then bring them to full conscious awareness so that my client can function so you can function with the new messaging, with the new feeling and recognizing that what happened then is not happening now. Allow me to say this, within third session, three sessions, he realized the panic and disorder, the panic attack, started after a month, actually a month and a half after they buried his mom. Now, after 40 days, panic and anxiety sets. Two months, I'm sorry, it was two months. 
when he got referred to coming in here. You see, the first month and a half, busy with what's happening, grieving, family, uh, taking care of business, taking care of everything to do with um, the person who died. And as life slowed down, panic and anxiety set in. This client of mine was having panic and anxiety that was created. And what he realized soon was his way of grieving. When we are not grieving and emotions of sadness set in, the body needs to do something. We, the more you suppress your feelings, the more it's suppressed inside. And when you have no way of dealing with grief, because grief in itself comes in different shapes and forms. Some cry, some uh, gets very secluded, some get very angry, some suppress it and live life as if nothing has happened. So panic and anxiety that hit, it was a sensation that was created because he would wake up four o'clock in the morning every single day, could not sleep. He would sleep one hour and then wake up again, sleep a few hours, wake up again with more panic and anxiety. So I want you to recognize what we did once he recognized what kind of Panic and anxiety is not a heart attack. After going to two ERs and having checked with different doctors in less than three sessions, in three sessions, he is managing it. The anxiety has faded away. And now he is starting the process of coping with what he was grieving about, the loss of his mom. And it doesn't matter how old we are. You know, my nonprofit foundation for the motherless children was the loss of a mother, not having a mother in the lives of children. Because we believe that when we take care of the psychological, emotional, and mental aspects of a child dealing with not having the nurturer in their life from the beginning, instead of suppressing the emotions or getting busy or helping them go through the grieving is so powerful. That shock system, that emotional pain becomes a physical pain. Just like trauma, it is trauma. It is something traumatic and it is not easy to cope with until some people can, some people shove it under the rug until it's time. Not recognizing that the body will make it your business until you deal with it. So most of us adults think we can handle it so much better, better than children. Some adults think as long as the child doesn't know, they don't need to deal with it. They look up to you and if a parent is not dealing with it and they're dealing with it, not knowing how to use the coping mechanism because his fear factor was affecting his sleep, their home, their children, and because now their children are afraid, afraid, thinking that daddy is having a heart attack and now it's created a fear factor at home. And all this truly is something that needs to be so openly talked about 
and I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, by all means, the moment you feel any sensation affecting your heart, affecting your body, have it checked out. But when every medical aspect is checked and it is sh shared with you that it could be stress factor and you say, I don't know what it could be, start writing down what's happening in your life. Could be something that happened just recently. It could be an auto accident many months ago. It could be a, an argument. It could be a movie, a film you saw that without you realizing affected your subconscious and it triggered, believe it or not, it's a boomerang. Anxiety is like a boomerang. It can surface and resurface until you deal with it, until you heal within. So, and that's what we have. The beauty. Our mind is so powerful. Your mind is the most complex and yet simple thing that there is. There is nothing as intricate as your brain, your mind, your thoughts that create things in this world, right? And your heart, the kindest, the most compassionate way that you are, that can also be as fierce and angry If you only learned to be kinder and gentler with your body and realize that everything that happens, I believe there are no accidents. I believe your body is there to safeguard you, house you, protect you. Just like if you don't eat right, your body expands. It doesn't happen on its own. It can also be menopausal. It can be metabolism. But whatever it is, our body is giving us signals for us to do something. Just like a toothache. When you get a toothache, you call the dentist. You pay attention to you. And if you leave that toothache in to, for it to become a cavity and the cavity stays there and beca becomes inflamed, then you have to do either a root canal or pull the tooth and do you see the complications and inflammation. So before anything happens, by all means, if you have any questions, call me, message me, ask me, I am here for you. I look forward to be your support system. You can heal within. You can be in total control and go from pain to gain to peace to harmony and balance. And even if I can't help you, I will do my utmost to find the right person to be there for you. One thing I have is connections. So take care of this beautiful, intricate mind of yours, your sound mind, your loving, kind heart, and this exquisite body of yours. Be kinder to you because you do matter. Who you are is inside this. And your past, let's shift the emotions connected to the experiences, deal with the trauma, and find that safety within yourself so that you can evolve to the things and do the things and be the success that you choose to be. My name is Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist. And if there's anything that I can be of help to you or someone you love, by all means, I'm here. 
until next week. Breathe in for counts, hold for counts, exhale for, for counts, and realize that life is genuinely good. Until next week, God bless, and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye. And if you like this, share it, subscribe, and go to YouTube, and you'll see the rest of all my podcasts.